Dalton, Arkansas, is a very small town in the northeastern section of the state, with a modest population of around 300 people. The folks there are for the most part, very friendly and down home, and are mostly hard-working, honest and decent people. It's an area where you see pickup trucks and tractors everywhere. It's the kind of place where most people would be honored to raise their kids. The Elliots were pretty much your normal small town everyday family. Carl was 30 and Lisa was 27. They had two adorable children, a little boy named Gregory, who was seven, and a little girl named Felicia, who was eight. Not really much bad could be said about them, except that they had the misfortune of meeting the Green family. On July 30th at about 1.15 a.m., a phone call was put into the Randolph County Police Department, where someone reported screaming and hollering coming from the Elliott home. The local sheriff's department headed straight there, but a raging storm with heavy winds and rain prevented them from finding anything of any usefulness. The house seemed dark, and without proper authorization, they had no right to enter the home. Whatever was going on, it was now quiet, so he decided to leave. Later that morning, Lisa's stepmother, who lived on the property with Lisa's father in a nearby home, went to Carl and Lisa's home to find out what was going on. She tried to go inside, but something was blocking the door. She became suspicious and called the Randolph County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Rob Sammons arrived and saw the door open just inches. He pulled his weapon and entered the home. On the floor, he found the, bo the body of the young boy, Gregory, who had been violently murdered. As he walked out the back door and looked around the property, he found the boy's mother, Lisa's body on the front porch of her father's home. An autopsy revealed that the poor wife and mother of two had suffered a horrific death. She had been struck in the head by a blunt object at least 27 times, but had died after the sharp end of a tire iron had been driven through her throat. Her young son also suffered a terrible end. He was held down and had the pointed end of a tire iron tool plunged into his throat multiple times and suffered a single blow to the head that crushed his skull. Who could do such a thing to a mother and her child? At first, the police had wondered if the husband Carl had anything to do with it. He was, after all, missing. There had also been a report of screaming in the house the previous day. That answer was answered with a definite no, when on August 2nd, Carl's body was found in the nearby Eleven Point River. There is no way he could have done it, because he was shot in the back of the head. Carl too was murdered. The questions were, who did it and where was their eight-year-old daughter Felicia? Five days after the murders, they got their first lead on the suspects, but their names wouldn't be released to the public for another five years. The police wanted to do the job right, and not mess up their case by releasing too much information. While they built their case against the monsters who had did this awful crime, the search was still on for young Felicia. They had hoped they would find her alive, but two years later, sadly, that would not be the case. Five years after the massacre, police released the names of the murder suspects. They were father and son murderers named Billy Dale Green and Charles Wayne Green, who went by his nickname Chad. Felicia's remains were eventually found on September 7, 2000 in a dry creek bed by an anonymous hunter. Police later le learned, during their investigation, that Billy and Chad had wrapped the girl up in a blanket and kidnapped her. For the next few days, they kept the young child in a metal drum out in the woods where the heat reached an excess of 100 degrees at times. Chad was a known pedophile in the area and had taken the poor girl out and victimized her repeatedly. You can imagine the pain, suffering and horror she must have endured. After days of being brutalized and used, Billy told his son that they had to kill her. The little girl who had went through so much was now held under water face down as her throat was slit and she was left there to die. They left her there laying in a creek bed where her remains would eventually be found. Chad and Billy Green were indicted on charges of four counts of capital murder, 
and one count of kidnapping. In 2003, five years after the murders, police arrested the father and son in connection with the killings. They were both convicted in 2004. Billy was given the death penalty, and Shad got 40 years after he agreed to testify against his father. That wasn't the end of the story just yet. Although Chad had made a plea deal to testify against his father for a reduced sentence, that deal was later revoked over improper testimony. The known pedophile and child murderer would now get what was coming to him. He was then sentenced to four life terms in prison, 40 years for the kidnapping and 56 years for raping two young girls in an unrelated case. Although Billy and Chad refused to offer a reason why, the Greens were known drug dealers, among other things. Elliot's family and friends said he had engaged in methamphetamine deals with the Greens, police said the motive for the killings was money. Billy was later granted a retrial and received four consecutive life sentences and 40 years for the kidnapping and the murders. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Elliot family and their loved ones. May Carl, Lisa, Gregory and Felicia now rest in peace. This was such a sad and senseless case. What a tragic end to not only the parents, but two innocent children who did nothing wrong. May the Greens die in prison and rot in hell. If you liked the story, we hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel. Help us out by giving the video a thumbs up. It helps YouTube know to recommend us. Subscribing and sharing our videos helps as well. We're a fairly new channel and trying to reach as many new viewers as possible and can't do it without your help. Till next till next time.